are live! But somehow, we're also on tape just like we are every single week from the bowels of Lee's music. Chris Folds, Marty Hastings, it's Kamloops last week. It's episode 17 already. 17. Getting that's there. A, that's a, yeah, we're like in adolescence now, getting into the adulthood. <laughs> that was a tough start here. I'm, I'm foggy, I'm foggy. <laughs> I was up late last night watching the Giants beat the Padres, and I had one too many PBRs. But Are they on a I'm huge okay. winning streak now? Best team in the Major League Baseball all year long, but no one seems to know about it because they're always fawning over the Blue Jays. <laughs> you did have some PBRs last night, I can tell. Uh, we do have a great show today, though. Frank Caputo, he's the big meal ticket today. Yes, Frank Caputo is the MP elect. He won big uh, and is our new uh, MP. He won in the uh, Monday's election. And he'll be talking about uh, the campaign and, uh, more importantly, what comes next as we go deja vu again. Uh, also, we're going to check in with the South Kamloops Titans. Huge day for them on Friday. Friday night football comes back under the lights for the first time in almost two years. I went to practice and met a couple, uh, just your classic high school student glory yeah. days guys that we can talk about a little bit. Yeah. But first, just some chatter. Uh, these are just two random couples that I just searched in our uh, database for romance in. Uh, I went on a first date last night, and I want to get your take, okay? Greetings on a first date. What are you supposed to do? Is it a handshake? Do you just do nothing and, and you just do a nod? Or what do you do for a greeting on a first well, date? Well, in a pandemic era, who knows anymore? You probably do a fist bump, right? And then you get charged with assault later in this, in this litigious age. I think uh, it, you gotta, you got to suss it out, I think. I, I think if, if, uh, if you go in and the girl stands up to lean towards you, you probably get good with a nice hug. But on if on she the first said, date, you go in for... No, for no, if she stands up and goes towards you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta read the room, right? You gotta read the room. Uh, if she's sitting there all like this, then you probably don't want to do anything. Just sit down and just talk, start talking. This, this one was tough. There was no room to read. We were outside. Mm -hmm. and we were in Pineview, which is normally the quietest neighborhood you can find. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm waiting over at the playground. We're going for a walk in Pineview. And she's on the other side of the road walking toward me. And Pineview turns into like Indy 500. So there's just cars. <laughs> We're standing like looking at each other. It's that first interaction. Cars, 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 yeah. waiting, kind of looking awkward, smiling at each mm -hmm. other. Finally, the car is clear in Pineview. And she walks toward me, and I just go in for a handshake, and, and she's like, oh, we're shaking hands, are we? Yeah, <laughs> just kind of like... Well, you're being safe, right? You do the yeah. cautious thing. You don't want to go in and start you know, kissing her right away either, right? No, so, obviously I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I've, I've, never, <laughs> I've never... I've done the handshake almost all my first dates. It's never really been an issue. I, I mean, it, it was fine. After that, it, we had a good talk and we, you know, for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, we walked around Pineview and sat down at the picnic table and talked. It was fine. It was a tough start with the handshake. Sure. Yeah. The ending of the date, I'm thinking, I can't go back to the handshake because it was a disaster. Yeah, you go for just a quick hug. So that's what I did. But I kind of, I take full blame for this one. I was parked on the other side of the road. It was dark now. There's was, was lights in the street, but she didn't know exactly where I was parked. So we're, we're walking across Across the street, I'm like, oh, I'll give, I'll just, I'll give you a hug now, <laughs> and I, I leaned in, and she, she's like, right here in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> it turned into this like half-ass, one-arm disaster hug, and I, I made a comment, like, I'm sorry, that was an awkward ending, and we walked away. You probably had better hugs to your buddies. Jesus. I absolutely do. So this is either going to be a really neat tale we tell at the wedding, or you'll never see her again. <laughs> yeah. And I'm betting the latter. Or she'll be pissed off that I talked about it on, <laughs> at a public show. Yeah. Um, no matter what happens, I'm always going to have Herman, and uh, it is getting a bit stale with Herman with this commercial. I know we've seen it a million times. We're going to do something new, but for now, eyes on the camera. Okay, buddy. Let's go. Marty Hastings here outside New Leaf Produce Market with my new best Herman. Look at the camera, pal. Stay on your feet. Herman is paying us to do this commercial, but he said this. He said, Marty, on one condition. I do not want to be in the commercial. And I said, Herman, that is complete and total hogwash. You will be in the commercial because I won't let him be sheepish. Not when all of his produce is edible art and not when it's a hyper local labor of love from his family farm, Hefley Farms. And not when he sources seasonal product from more than 40 of the best regional suppliers like Newfeld Farms in Abbotsford, British Columbia. I had to see it for myself. Nothing like a good road trip. In you get, Herman. Get me some sour keys, pal. No peeking, Herman. Oh. Hey, 
Help my goodness, Steve. Are these strawberries ever good? You're quiet today, Herman. Want some corn? Have a bite, Herm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh, and yes, it's true. A lot of people have asked me. They say, Marty, is he awkward on camera? I say, you're darn right he is. But this is a quality man who deals only in quality produce. And he has to be seen. Right, Herm? Okay, bud. Last chance to make the catch. Let's go. Embarrassing. You and I were talking very briefly about... Um, how things seem to have calmed down in general in the city after our tumultuous summer. Do you, especially yesterday, there was a nice day out, say, yeah. what, do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's nice. The election's over, so we don't have to worry about that. The, uh, there's no wildfires of note. That's all done now. Uh, you got a hint of crisp fall air in the air. September's is always the ni nicest month weather-wise. I mean, today's beautiful. Tomorrow's going to be just 27 and beautiful. This is what it looks like in September, usually, in, in Kamloops. Um, it feels nice. I mean, yeah, the, the, the case counts for COVID-19 are down in the last week in Kamloops, but they're still pretty high. They're 158. We set a record the week before at 270. The hospitals are in, are, are in serious trouble. Um, mm -hmm. So that's still going on in the background, but I think we need to sort of just uh, embrace uh, the good stuff, like you say. Yeah, I was going to say, like, there, you know, are we getting lulled into complacency here? Like with... we were at the beginning of the summer where everything's going to be open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even with the fires, like, yeah. you know, they're, they're gone now and they're not really affecting our area. No, what's going to happen is we're going to think everything's good again and this, this winter's going to be a, a COVID nightmare and then uh, <laughs> the rains are going to come and wash away all the hillsides of the fires burned and we'll be back to, like, uh, all stressed out again over the winter. And basically, it's a sick cycle of, uh, of stress is going to happen. That's just the reality, but we have to find our... Um, we have to find our points of light, you know, we have to find the nice little things, you know, the, the Lions are playing tomorrow, high school football's back, yeah. you know, walking in the park on a nice day, going out for a nice beer on a patio. I mean, the, 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 more than ever now, and I'm being serious here, the simple things are more important than ever right now. Yeah, we'll talk about, about that more in my segment with sports because I'm feeling that way too. But, yeah. And maybe it is to have right now some, some ignorance is okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, you just, you know, get away from, like I said before, get away from the news sometimes, yeah, and we're immersed in it, but just forget about it for a while and, 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 and you find the good things in life. You know, a dog and a cat walking down the street, they're having fun. They don't know about all this, all this baloney, so you just go to sort of just simplify. Don't tell people to turn our show off in the middle of the show. Okay? No, no, the <laughs> news. Turn off the news. Like, I have news on all the time at home, and sometimes it's good to... Uh, just to turn it off and watch watch a game or read a book or whatever, yeah. Produce, pumpkin season, mm. what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I like the pumpkin, it's really, really orange, I like that. And uh, radishes are coming in good, and um, what are these? Beets. Oh, beets, Bunch beets are beets. excellent. Pickle beets are the best, yeah. Yeah, I had beets yeah. for the first time the other night, and they weren't too bad. Actually. Beets are great, and good for you, apparently, too. The election, bit of a lemon, wasn't it? Yeah, the whole campaign was a uh, lemon, and it should have never been called, and we said that before. Uh, it's like a time travel machine. We, uh, we went to the polls in 2021, and we ended up at 2019. Nothing changed. Nothing changed except we have a new MP. Let's talk more about that in Above the Folds. There's Justin Trudeau. Just your thoughts in general on the federal election, Chris. Yeah, uh, before I get to that, this is the first election since I've been in Kamloops in 2005 that uh, not one leader came here during the election campaign. This is the first election that I can recall. I know it's a short campaign, the shortest you could possibly have, 36 days, but still not one leader came here. Uh, Jagmeet Singh did come here before the election to visit to Kamloops, but it's not part of the campaign. Uh, thoughts on the election? It was, it was boring. It was, it was a dud. And it's amplified by the fact that this is the second election we've covered. Last year's provincial election was the first one uh, in, the, in the pandemic era. There's no you know, busy campaign offices. There's no campaign night frivolity. There's, no, uh, there's much less door-to-door -door and contact with people and going to the market and stuff like that. It's very socially isolating and very um, sterile. And I think that bleeds into the coverage and people's um, interest or lack thereof. It kind of turned into what you thought it was going to turn into, though, right? I mean, you, you called this a while back, not that it was an outlandish prediction, no. but you kind of figured this was going to happen. You didn't have to be Nostradamus to predict it. We, I do a pool every year, and you pick your numbers. And I think I was off by four with them. I was dead on with the Conservatives. But everyone knew this was going to happen. Um, and that's why you question $600 million, right? I mean, oh, my God, it's a lot of money. You mentioned that um, there was no campaigning done in our city, and maybe that was just because 
the lead up wasn't too big or, or why yeah yeah we was? had a 36 day campaign which is the the shortest you can do by law um, uh, we'll have Frank Caputo on and he, and he went door to door and he talked and uh, and, and, and Jesse McCormick and Bill Sundu they all they all did their campaigning but it's it's so stifled with the pandemic you can't have big rallies you can't have big meetings like we're, our debate we had to do online and it was very it wasn't very good because you don't have the interaction with the people. What were your takeaways from the local candidates in general? I thought anyone who runs uh, deserves to be heard. That's why we had them all on our on our debate. I think running is hard, and uh, and and you know most of them who run know they're not going to win, but they're they're doing it because they think people should have 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 a have a voice. Ian Curry knew he was never going to win, but he's there putting the Greens uh, message out there. Jesse McCormick probably knew the Liberals weren't going to win. He's new to new to town. Bob O'Brien thought he might do a bit better. Bob O'Brien thought he was going to finish in the top three as an independent candidate. I give him props for being optimistic. You can't broadcast from a World War II bunker during the debate no, if you're going to no. do that. And I'm not sure why he was he was at home with the big <laughs> earphones on. But but hey, he, he ran. And, and, and Bob O'Brien, people might not know, he's, he's well known in town in that he used to own the Max Nightclub and a number of other businesses. So he was, and he was there to try to get the, the his perspective out. And what he got, 240, mm -hmm. 278 votes, I think. Yeah, I took a little. So good on him for running, yeah. and, and God bless those guys, Wayne Allen too. They brought some color to an election that they, did. they needed it. They did, and it's and it's not easy, and, and and it's a lot of work, even if you know you're not going to win. So I give him kudos. I do want to ask Frank Caputo about uh, Wayne Allen and some of the stuff he came up with. We'll do that in our uh, next segment, which is last week this week. Speaking of romance, there's Frank Caputo and his wife after the big win. Chris, just an introduction of Frank Caputo. Frank Caputo, uh, first of all, this is a great photo Dave Eagles took. I think this is the best election night victory photo we've ever had because it's so different and it's so honest and it's so charming. That's Audette and uh, Frank. And they're celebrating in, outside his downtown campaign office. Again, there's not a big crowd or anything because of the pandemic. But Frank Caputo is a, is a well-known Crown prosecutor in town and he was the former president of the Conservative Writing Association. He stepped down to run to succeed... Um, Kathy, uh, Kathy McLeod. It was a good race. It was four people, four well-known and, and worthy people running for the nomination. And Frank won the nomination, and then he ran and represented conservatives. And he won in, I guess you could almost say, a landslide. Right now, as of today, uh, September 23rd, he's up 9,000 votes over Bill Sundu, who is a worthy candidate. There's, uh, there's a few thousand uh, mail-in ballots yet to be counted, but there, there's not enough to, to turn the tide. Great. Let's bring Frank in right now. There he is. We started with a talk about first dates and that picture of you and your wife. Do you remember how you greeted her on your first date? Did you shake her hand? Did you hug her? Do you remember what you did? And what do you think the, the appropriate protocol is for a greeting on a first date? Oh, uh, well, actually, we, so we met in law school. And part of meeting in law school was we, we didn't know each other. So it wasn't a date. Uh, we went to, it was a pub, I believe, that just, you know, it was, it was something in our first three weeks, I believe, four weeks, actually it was, it was the, it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving in 2004. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> and uh, we met at a pub just with probably another 30 law students. And I looked to my left and I said, wow, uh, I need to, I need to talk to this person. And I, I shook her hand. Um, Back in 2004, you shook <laughs> lots of people's hands and <laughs> she introduced herself. She doesn't remember any of this. I, of course, remember all of it. <laughs> and, uh, and then about a half hour later, we started talking. Well, that's a, that's a great start. The handshake. The handshake. There you go. Just your thoughts in general on, on what's transpired in your life over the last uh, few days. It has been a bit surreal, if I'm being super candid. Um, it's such an honour to represent the uh, voters and constituents of Kamloops, Thompson, Caribou. It really is. I'm uh, so blessed and so fortunate. Um, it's, uh, it's great. How hard was it to, to, to get the, I guess, the emotion going or get, to get the vibe going in this weird era we're in right now, trying to campaign? 
it it was very different and there are a couple of re- well, there are probably three reasons that i would say it was different uh, number one this wasn't an election that anybody really wanted canadians generally very few people i'm sure say wow i'm really excited for an election right um elections cost money uh it's an effort sometimes to learn about your local candidates and attend the forums and that's part of our democracy so it, it because we had just been to the polls two years earlier and we had a provincial election election not long ago. Um, I think that uh, that was a, a bit of a novelty here. Second thing, obviously, COVID, that really changed things. Uh, when you're door knocking, I would try to stand about 10 feet away. Um, after some consideration too, I donned a mask even at 10 feet away uh, after giving it some thought. Um, third, and this is, this is just a, a bit of a change that I've noticed since I've been campaigning, is demographics and what people do. Uh, I, I'm not sure if either of you subscribe to Amazon Prime, for instance, but it's not uncommon now for people to get a doorbell ring and a package to be left at their door um, or to no longer have a landline. So uh, if uh, my doorbell rings, I assume it's a package. Now. Mm. So I've actually noticed quite a big difference from especially 2015 and even from 2019 in terms of how many people answer their phones uh, or answer their doors. So these are just changes. It's nothing negative or positive. It's just uh, it just has to change the way you campaign a little bit. It seems to change more rapidly these days. When you were going door to door, you met a lot of dogs. I've seen that, a lot of dogs. And, uh, and you probably got the canine vote uh, wrapped up. But what, um, and, we, and we've done the, the, we did the full page preview uh, in the uh, profiles in the paper and we asked the question, but I'll get you to rehash that here. What were maybe the top two or three concerns that people were saying to you uh, that you found on the campaign trail? Uh, jobs are always a concern, right? People want to be able to provide for themselves and their family. Uh, spending was a huge one. People in Kamloops, Thompson Caribou, resoundingly were concerned about generations to come. As in, uh, right now, prior to our COVID budget, I believe the federal government was spending eight cents of every dollar on debt repayment. And that might not be a figure that every every voter knows, but there's a general overarching concern. If if I can afford, you know, a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars for rent, and I'm living in a place that costs three thousand dollars, that's a, a a concern. So uh, spending was a big one, and and climate change uh, was also another one that uh, people who may not have really been thinking about this 10 years ago really started giving it some consideration. And that's why I was happy that our platform addressed all of those issues. All right. I want to ask you about Wayne Allen and God bless him. He calls himself the working man. He calls himself the straight shooter. There's always some interesting candidates that, that pop up in these elections. What was it like to run against Wayne Allen and any of his policies or ideas kind of stick out in particular to you? I didn't get to know the other candidates. I'm I, I in, when I practice law and I, I teach at the law school as well. And I one of the things that I preach uh, or two of the things I preach are, are civility and cordiality, especially among the bar. And I had really hoped to express those virtues in the election. And because of this election, we only had one forum where six of us were in the same room and another forum where, where four of us were in the same room. So I really didn't get to know Wayne. He seemed in, in our brief interaction like a, a, a really interesting uh, a person. And I, I asked him, why are you running? And he said, because I want change. And I, I admire that because it's not easy to put your name forward, especially as uh, an independent. Um, in terms of his policies, I, I don't know if there's one in particular you want me to comment on. But well, I, yeah. look, did you hear a CBC interview by chance? I did not. Okay, well, let me just recap here. He, he seemed to suggest that he had a premonition about the pandemic. He knew something was coming, he said. Uh, he wants to build a water bomber factory in the interior to help win the war on fire. Uh, homelessness and drug use. The solution, you build greenhouses. Um, and in the debate, I know you heard this one in the debate, um, the people of Kamloops should be armed and ready because the animals, the bears, the coyotes, and the wolves are coming to town. I mean, just anything you want to pick out of that uh, bouquet there, go ahead. Um, 
I'm not sure what to pick. <laughs> the water bomber thing is, isn't, isn't outlandish. It's not the worst idea. It's not the worst idea I've heard, yeah. Okay, what about, how, how would you plan to boost the economy in Kamloops if you're not going to build the water bomber factory? How about that? Uh, well, the number one thing is jobs and long-term jobs. For too long, our resource sector has been uh, ignored. And we do have some good jobs available. One of the things that we as Conservatives ran on is a job search program where uh, we would see the uh, first six months of a person person's salary covered between 25 and 50 percent, depending on whether they uh, had been employed or not, and renegotiating the softwood lumber deal. There is no softwood lumber deal. For me, forestry fed my family growing up. My dad was a mill worker at uh, Balco, later Tolco, and I became a mill worker for a summer too, and I appreciated that. Um, building up that infrastructure is very important. So that's one of, was one of our campaign commitments, was uh, high-speed internet by 2025. And infrastructure is really important too, because when we think about it, uh, a lot of people out of Kamloops don't realize in the Barrier Clearwater area, there's no natural gas access. And these are small things, again, that can have a big impact, things that we might take for granted in Kamloops that uh, are, are infrastructure that can really help uh, everybody in the riding. The election results uh, came in and they're virtually the same as 2019, but you are now the MP. The, the popular vote's always interesting to look at. And, and again, your party received m more votes than the Liberals but you receive far fewer seats. Where do you stand on uh, changing the first past the post to some kind of proportional representation where the percentage of the votes are, are mirrored by the seats in the, in the House? This is a, a really important issue. It's one I've frankly given some thought to, I, maybe even a lot of thought, I would say. And, and to be very candid, I haven't landed on one side or the other. I know that um, the Liberals did campaign on a promise to bring this in, and they, they never did bring it in. Now, the, the consideration, one of the key considerations in my view is this. Um, at what threshold does somebody get a seat, right? Uh, because if you are going to look at proportional representation, um, and you think about, okay, we have 338 seats and um, a certain party might have, say, 5% of the vote, that would be equal, what, 20 seats potentially, 18 seats. Uh, that's something that I think we have to tangibly look at. And, and if something that's so dramatic, it would probably be best to go to a referendum, in my view. Yeah, and we had two of them in BC, and, and they the first one was not. The first one was stacked against it because the majority voted for it, but the threshold was higher. But you're right, it's been that way, um, and, and people have tried that. Um, when, when you're a new MP, I think you go back and you do a boot camp to, to learn how to do everything from, from the procedures in the house to, to something as simple as finding an apartment and, and maybe recommendations on where to get a coffee and how to, how, how, how to get around Ottawa. When does that start for you? Uh, it starts next week, okay. <laughs> so it's really starting quickly. So I have an orientation uh, booked for next week. Um, it is uh, September 30th is an important day when it comes to truth and reconciliation. So I will be in the riding uh, on that day, uh, no questions asked. And, but you'll be in Ottawa before that? I will be, yes. Okay. Were you prepared for kind of the hounding, the media hounding and, and the media request you've had to deal with? And how has that kind of affected your life in the last little bit? I actually... It, it, it's not as bad as you make it sound. Yeah, who said it was going to be bad? <laughs> no, I, I, uh, it's but not it's, as bad as you make it sound. Everybody's yeah. been pretty respectful of my time. Uh, what I've found, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that most media, they, they've been pretty respectful of the fact that you're a human being with a life who, you know, and children and things like that. And uh, what I've been told, and one of the things I actually asked a number of reporters when I was even seeking the nomination is, is what what do you see are the good qualities in politicians or what would you like to see from a politician? And the resounding answer I received was accessibility and just communication. Yeah. When I've dealt with the media, uh, nobody's ever chastised me for for not being available. I had a request for for something in the afternoon this, uh, this evening or, or tomorrow evening, and I'm not available for either. And I just sent a text saying, look, tomorrow is definitely not going to work and tonight's not looking so good, I'll, I'll get back to you. And the response was, hey, thanks a lot for getting back to me. I appreciate that. So uh, from what I've been told, the, the main issue is just one of accessibility and responsiveness. And uh, it, it, most of the media have my cell phone number, if not all of them. And they're, uh, they're prepared to, uh, I'm prepared to let them keep it, obviously, as long as they, uh, they don't make it public. And I'm sure that's going to be the case. Well, we'll keep calling you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Any final thoughts, Frank? 
it's just such an honor. It was an honor to share the stage with the six others. Um, it's an honor to uh, represent the people of Kamloops, Thompson, Caribou. When I when I spoke to my to to the supporters, and we we didn't really have an event. It was a, a small group, a quiet night, I would call it. And uh, you spoke about that uh, that photo that uh, we thought we could sneak in a hug, and yeah. that was really reminiscent of the night. It's like, oh, quick hug. We, yeah. We, we we got this. This is incredible, right? And uh, some people may realize this, some people may not. But my my grandfather came to Canada in 1952 uh, on my mom's side. Uh, Pasquale Espina was his name, and uh, my mom would follow um, about five years later with her mother. And uh, my father's family came, four of them, in 1961, and collectively they may have had two pennies to rub together. And my mom uh, looked at me on election night and she said, uh, what would your grandfather say if you were here? And uh, that really uh, uh, struck a chord uh, because so many people sacrificed and helped so much in the village around me was so important, so vital to getting me here today. And uh, that's something I hold on to. And that's something I really want to pass on to anybody listening. Well, you've, you've done well, and you've done well today, and we appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Take care. All the best. Thank you. Yeah, Chris, just your thoughts on the interview. No, I thought it was good. I thought he's a straight shooter. Uh, everybody I've talked to who know Frank, I, I only know him through the news. Uh, uh, everyone who knows him, he's, he's a decent guy. He is a straight shooter, honest guy, and um, he seems like just a genuinely nice guy. And the other candidates... Uh, we're, we're very much like that, and I think uh, when he mentioned c civility uh, at the bar, and uh, that's the whole thing I like is that you got to be civil. You have to treat your opponents with respect, and I like that uh, angle that he brings in. Speaking of straight shoot, I'm still not done with this water bomber stuff. W Wayne Allen. <laughs> well, I don't think you know. I, th I think Wayne Allen has a thing about the coyotes. My uh, cat went missing for two days. We thought the coyotes got him because you hear them yip yip yipping. Um, but the cat finally came back with a chunk of flesh out of her butt. Uh, but you know, if, if if Wayne was there, the coyote wouldn't have got the cat. So, and I think the water bombers is not a horrible idea. We've had worse ideas. The fast ferries is one in the 90s. So, I mean. You know, he's such a straight shooter. He should be piloting the water bombers. The wildfires would be out in no, in no time. Never well, I think I think them. I think Wayne Allen, if he's watching this, he should be preparing to run in the next election, which is a year from now, the civic election. He might have a better shot running for a city council. All right, that's it for politics. Let's talk about sports in the title of Hastings. This is the inspiration right here for today's segment. I walked into South Kamloops Titans practice. Uh, he wasn't dressed, he was injured, but Grayson Peters just jumped off the page. He just reminded me of 15 of my old teammates and what it's like to be a high school football player. I think you have a high school football story you wanted to tell? Oh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say the South Kamloops Titans. I moved to Kamloops from Abbotsford back in uh, 05, but well, I grew up in Abbotsford and went to Abbey Senior, uh, the, uh, the, the, the school of Chase Claypool of the, mm of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the school of Folsey. Mm -hmm. And we were the mighty Abbasur Panthers. I wasn't playing, I was watching, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, in 84, Abbasur shocked the world by going and winning the, uh, winning the BC High School Football Championship at, at a rain-soaked Empire Stadium, Empire Stadium against Notre Dame, the, 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 uh, the great George Oswald-led private school in East Vancouver. And at that time, uh, Kamloops, South Kamloops was actually known as uh, Red Devils, the Cam High. Cam they High. were a really good team. And they played Abbotsford a few times. And I was just going to mention, you played football down in, um, in uh, Surrey there. And um, you, were, you I actually... I played rugby. You, yeah, and you actually gave... The, you, you were actually holding the ball for Sean White, right? No. You, you used to hand him the ball when he made those great... The Sean White, the great kicker for the Eskimos. We the, were the rivals. He played for Sammy Amu. And uh, I was in uh, Earl Marriott Secondary, were, the I think, Mariners. I think you were, you were holding his ball for him. No, we actually lost to Sammy Amu in back-to-back -back Sandcastle Cups. And I'm still not over it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. But uh, we missed this. Like, we missed high school football gathering, yes. uh, watching these kids play under the lights. Yeah. So I caught up uh, with Grayson at practice and we can see some of that video right now. Okay, first of all, we gotta talk about that hair, man. Best hair on the team by far. How do you, like, where did you come up with that, with that oh, hair? So I had a mop top, this was two years ago, complete mop top, and I was just getting done with the hair in the face. So I saw another guy uh, who had a mullet, looked sweet, so I'm like, why not? And I actually got it done in one of the school bathrooms here the day before uh, spring break, before lockdown. So yeah, that's how, that's how it came to be. And what's the feedback from the boys been like? Oh, they, they think I'm an absolute menace to society. It's hilarious. <laughs> just, just the energy people get off me on the field is just, it's just crazy. 
Well, the, the skill we have is definitely there. Um, it's just the fact of who's really wanting to play this year. That's our, that's going to be our determining factor because we have the coaches to do it. We have the skill to do it. We have all that. It's just who wants to come out and compete. Give me the rundown on, on your team. Who, uh, who should we be looking out for as far as some, some guys that are going to make some noise this year? Um, Kai Yamoka, number 45. Uh, he's an amazing linebacker, crouches the ball, all that. Um, well, let's see who else here. Our quarterback, Jesse Peters, he's not out here right now. He's sick. Um, all of our linemen has potential, all of them. It's just a matter of do they want to come out and bang heads. Um, Are you hurt? Then, yeah. Oh, what's wrong with you? Uh, this last game, I took a weird hit to my shin and uh, strained my MCL pretty good. So are you going to be playing on Friday? I don't think so. Don't think so. Eh? No. Oh, man, how tough is it going to be to sit out that one, the first home game this season? That's, that's going to be a tough one. It's, um, I just, For me, the one thing I hate the most about football is being injured and just watching your team either succeed without your – uh, get driven into the ground without you. Definitely sucks not being able to contribute. There's only one other double A team in your division. It's Vernon. Yeah. Um, what's that rivalry like, and, and what's it going to take to beat them this year? Oh, the rivalry is, it's uh, it's real, and it's going to take a lot to beat them because they got a lot of good skill, they got good coaches, all that. So we really got to focus up this year. Um, play our best game against them. Can't have any mistakes, or else they're going to capitalize on it and take us. Disappointed not to be able to play Westside this year, and especially because you guys get to usually play that under the lights game too. I mean, was it disappointing to hear that they, they're not going to have a team? Yeah, it was definitely disappointing because they're they're the biggest rivalry in our Double A division. Um, so not being able to play them under the lights of the TCC is definitely it's not the greatest feeling in the world. But at least we're still getting to play under the lights this year, which I'm happy about. Have you done any kind of interviews lately, or been out and about uh, in the city that's kind of reminded you of what you've missed during the pandemic? Just the only thing that was recent, because we're all stuck at home working from home still, is uh, what was the, the political debate, actually being in a room with people and be able to talk and, and do that kind of thing. Um, it, it's much, much more poignant with sports because you cover sports, mm -hmm. and for the last year it's been this weird... We're, it's starting to get good now with the Blazers and with the high school football and actually being face to face with people. Yeah. Um, that's what I think is is when you come when you, we were talked earlier about the s simple things in life. This is it's it's the human connection. We're social animals, right? Yeah, I've had some kind of borderline corny moments just thinking to myself like, man, this is this is great. I mean, even just going to Wolfpack practice and mm -hmm. something that would have been just totally mundane before and talking to players and yeah. some of the stories you get just by listening and watching and, and Way seeing, different than seeing by what's phone. going exactly. on. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, it's like you're, you're kind of gifted almost in this way with a with a self-defense mechanism that you can handle all these things that happen to you and you just kind of go on with life like you know all of a sudden your job is totally different maybe you lost your job and or, or you're worried about losing your job um, and you just kind of roll with all these punches and you don't realize what you missed until it comes back and it, you know it's it, it wasn't healthy to be living how it was it's, you know for me living at home doing absolutely nothing uh, I mean you had your family but um, mm -hmm. that's kind of been on been on my mind a little bit what about inactivity? Because it hasn't all been good in the high school scene. I talked to Cleve Martman from uh, Westside, and he said a lot of his players just got used to inactivity, and they're not coming out to playing uh, to play football. So, anything like that you've noticed? Yeah, that was an interesting story, an interesting observation by the coach to say that he figures that he can't feel the team because the players just they've gone and done other things because they got used to the sort of the sedentary lifestyle of the pandemic. Um, my, my kids are 22 and 20, so they're, they're not teenagers anymore. Uh, my daughter's very active. But I think when, when, you, when I read that story, I was thinking, you know, I'm, I'm at home and I'm looking to watch the Lions game. You go to TSN, and quite often on TSN, they'll have eSports on there where people actually sit and watch people sit and play video games. My son is a big eSport guy. He likes to watch Rocket League and stuff like that. And we had a little debate. I said, how can you sit here and watch a guy play a game? And he looked at me watching the Lions game. So <laughs> you're sitting there watching guys play a game too. It's just a different generation. But mm -hmm. uh, that could be part of it where, where they're still active, but they're active more like this rather than out in the field. But it is really jarring to hear that for sure. I want to play some audio from that phone call with Cleve Martman right now. COVID hit us with that knock, I always say knock about five players that you, you'd get out of the basement out playing the sport. And uh, they you know they, they're, they're hunkered down, not motivated to do much anymore. Right. So um, I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but I feel like there's, there's a group of kids that just want to hang out, but you can pull some of them out. Right. But you know, they did a lot of hanging out, you know, during a non-productive year or so. 
and just got accustomed to it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And that time I go, you know, I, I just saw him. I said, hey, you want to come out? Uh, no. I don't want to get down on these kids as well because I talk, I talk about how it's nice to go out and talk to people. But there's also a side of me that's gotten used to just doing phone calls, you know, and not going out to do these things. Yeah. Some laziness that's crept in as well. Yeah. Have you noticed that that at all? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, you can go uh, cover uh, well for for city council, for example. If if Jessica Wallace is going to cover city council meeting, she prefers to be there, yeah. even though she can sit at home and even even during non pandemic times, you can sit at home and watch it on on TV or on your video screen. It's just not the same. It's no. like being at a game. You see way more out, out out of the camera's eye when you're when you're going to the Wolfpack practice rather than talk to him on the phone. You might see somebody like you went here. You would never know this guy wouldn't have jumped out at you. You wouldn't have seen him through the phone. Yeah. So that's important to do. I think it's more the mental strain of going to, into so, uh, social situations again. You, know, yeah. you haven't been doing that for a long time. So going out into the public and mingling, if, you have, if you're not always feeling extroverted, is, is a lot different after not having ha had to do it for a year. Or yeah, and, and, and that's amplified also by, not just by maybe you're socially introverted, but also you have to think, always keep in mind these protocols of spacing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're moving on into hopefully a more normal era and the uh, case numbers are down in Kamloops. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be it for the show today. I want to thank our title sponsor, Herman Hothi, right here at New Leaf Produce Market. Get down. They've, they've got pumpkins for sale. We're going to do a new commercial. I think they have some juicing events coming up. Yeah. And they, uh, just to remind people where they are, they're in uh, North Kamloops in the Fortune uh, right next to the Fortune Shopping Center at the corner of 7th and Tranquil. Thanks to Magic Mike, Miltimore, and Bonnie doing their thing. Got the hands up there. Bonnie, thank you very much. And uh, again, New Leaf Produce Market. That's it for the show. We'll see you last week. Mm.